Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today is Channel Talk time. So I'm going to read a couple of your interesting comments and we're going to chit chat together. So grab a coffee, tea, lunch, snack, potato chips, strawberries, uh, I don't know, an ice cream, I guess, because it's kind of hot outside, very sweaty here. Let's read Robert Elder. How you doing, sweetie? Robert Elder on my What is Fashion All About video. Dear Jacob, all I can say is that no perfume is worth the money houses are demanding today. Regardless how well the packaging presentation is, no fragrance is worth more than $125. At the end of the day, it's just scented water and alcohol. After being in the fragrance community, I'm shocked to see the prices people are willing to pay. What do people do with the box bottle once the perfume is all used? The overall mindset in the world of perfume is elaborate bottle uh, elaborate bottle plus elaborate box plus high price point equals great juice always lol and this is not always true for example the italian house oh god i don't know how to pronounce this one uh, x e r j o f f xerjoff maybe lol their prices uh, are just insane that they expect people to pay and the perfumes are not really that great. I also think people should start giving indie artists more attention, but they don't because we don't have the budget for such elaborate presentations. The fashion perfume world is a very fickle one, so vain and cutthroat that it just makes me sick. For me, Chanel is most beautiful of all houses, but come on, no handbag is worth 2,500 euro. And no dress is worth 22000 Behind the scenes, the fashion fragrance world is very ugly, cutthroat, and very dishonest. It can be very, very dishonest, very cutthroat. It can be also amazing. It all depends what people you meet, and it all depends like what sort of environment you're in and uh, what your priorities are. I mean, if you set your priorities very straight and you're very disciplined and you're very consequent with what you choose and, you know, how you choose to go about certain things and making certain choices, then you're good to go. If you are one of the people that is actually making the fashion or the perfumes, uh, in your case, you are, it's more difficult. It's, it's more tricky because you have to... <sighs> you have to battle out, you know, the competition and... And because the competition is stronger, so they have more money to invest in, you know, in, in promoting uh, their brand. So the information that they have come up with a new fragrance kind of overshadows your uh, own brand. And it makes it more difficult for you to kind of get to the end consumer at the end of the day. Because the end consumer has just that fruit fly of an attention span and, it, and you have to bombard it constantly with uh, information otherwise the consumer just doesn't they forget about you uh, that's how it is today in a nanosecond you're gone and uh, it's with everything we're so used to consume so quickly you know um, it's it's so fascinating to me how you have to keep on feeding the monster also here on social media you know if i if i'm super busy or if something happens and unfortunately from time to time it does happen and then i can post less and, and film less you know immediately everything drops i mean i have 800 videos online but people don't care they want the newest they want me to keep posting and so if i stop posting for a certain period of time i notice how all the numbers and statistics just drop nobody cares you know like People discovering you, is this light in or out? People discovering you like for, you know, from older videos, it's like people just want the newest and it has to be from tomorrow, not even today. So 800 videos are online almost, but people just kind of flock in masses to the, um, the newest ones. And the second you stop posting, it's like people forget about you because the space that they have within them, um, it's like the whole world is battling to get that space in, inside of their attention spans. And the second that you stop producing, somebody else just takes your place immediately. But the second, the second you stop producing, already there's a queue of people waiting to just like, just slither in into your place. That's how it is. Um, and so it's very hard to be niche. It's very hard to be indie. 
uh, in any respect, not just in the fragrance world, in fashion as well, also in film. You know, independent movies are always seen as something amazing once you've actually managed to produce one, to, to, for, to complete one and actually distribute one. But usually it's like a miracle to, to actually get through with it because usually you never get really the money you need to produce it. And then even if you have got the money you needed to film, then you, you, chances are you might not get ever a distribution. You might not sell the movie. You know, there, there might not be any distributor willing to sell it. As far as prices are concerned, also the same thing. A huge brand, unlike an indie brand, needs to invest billions more. An indie brand doesn't have not even the hundreds of thousands, let alone millions or billions, but a huge brand has those billions and invests those billions so that they can battle their way into our attention spans, so that they can battle their way into our minds, into our attention. And that's why the end, cons actually, that's why at the end of the day, their products cost more. Yes, they want more profit, but also they, you know, um, you end up paying for that marketing. That's the sick part. That's what makes me angry. Uh, that at the end of the day, for luxury, and not just luxury, but expensive goods in general, we, the consumer, pay the price. Always. That, that's, that's what it is. We are paying, at the end of the day, uh, for being bombarded with the commercials. So, you ask yourself, oh, an Apple product, you know, um, an iPhone, an iPod, an iPad, uh, a MacBook, whatever. They cost so much more than other computers. Well, that's because the brand Apple invests so much more to promote them and to make you aware, constantly aware that they exist, whether it be at a bus stop, train stop, airport, uh, commercials online, advertisements in different electronic stores and shops. You are constantly brainwashed that their product is always the best and that and you're brainwashed into you know always see well brainwashed it's obvious that the commercials are always there but they invest billions to constantly be present with advertisements at the end of the day that's the extra money that they pay that a smaller brand can't afford but at the end end of the day they charge you more for their product so that it's your money that goes into advertising their product back to you again so we, the consumer, pay everything. We end up paying literally everything. And it's a vicious circle. And it keeps spiraling and spiraling and spiraling and spiraling and spiraling. At a certain point, some of us just don't have the money anymore, or too old, or retired, or you die before you retire. If, if the state is lucky, if the government is lucky, you croak before right a day before you hit retirement so they don't owe you nothing if you're not married or whatever, uh, and yet you worked <laughs> your whole life and you kept, you know, part of your uh, salary goes into these retirement funds. It, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. We are all legally slaves to the system, including little things like fragrances and indie fragrances uh, to bigger things like pension funds. Um, what am I wearing today, by the way? <laughs> I rediscovered this beauty. Jean-Paul Gaultier, the pure parfum uh, of Classique. And this one is with a metal corset. It's a limited edition, 30 ml pure perfume. Uh, this is number 2084 of 3000. This is like actually etched in the glasses, the number of this particular bottle. It's so beautiful. It's like with glitter and stuff. I have done a review of uh, Gaultier... A classic um, on my channel many moons ago, but you could check it out. It's so cool, and it, it's with the stopper. Well, let me put some more. This one is so good. It's making me feel really 90s vibes galore, like 90s at their best. To me, classic is the fragrance of the 90s. Oh, let's also put it here. Um, it's the smell of the 90s more than maybe, I don't know, any other in terms of female fragrances. Oh, Ooh. <laughs> I'm like sizzling. Oh, I want that. You know, now I want the Madonna corset. Now I want the Jean-Paul Gaultier kilts. I want to wear his uh, boots. I, I want the Jean-Paul Gaultier sailor shirt on right now. Oh, the bleached hair. I want to listen to his Auto Zuzette. Dude, 
how to do that. <laughs> it was it's, he made this one single hit single. It was like how to do that, but pronounced in French. Funny song, you check it out. I think it's on, on YouTube as well. Anyway, you see, you see what happens. This is a perfume that was, I mean, classique in general, m mass released. And at the beginning, there was the pure parfum, uh, and then now it's discontinued. Something so beautiful you can't even get, even from a huge, you know, brand like the perfumes of Jean Paul Gaultier also are limited within production and stuff, not just the indie houses. You know, money speaks volumes in this world, unfortunately. So something so beautiful like this is not in production anymore. Uh, in this concentration, mm, this is pre-reformulation period. Uh, yeah, so something like this is not available anymore, you know, with like metal corset and all this beautiful, I mean, how the bottle is made and how the juice is inside. Now you could get the eau de toilette, the eau de parfum, maybe there's some like intense version, but they're all meh, nothing compared to this. So, okay, right, I'm like <laughs> going into uh, perfumes now. Do you know how perfumes always obsess me so much? Um, right, so let's see, who else is here? Um... Gee, there's so many beautiful comments. <laughs> mm. Gozia, Gozia, how you doing, sweetie? On a video I made a long time ago, the review of Chanel number no. five. Uh, just bought 30 milliliter of the pure parfum. Never really liked much of eau de parfum, but pure perfume is just divine. Yes, and I would oh, I have it here somewhere. There it is. I would suggest everybody to at least try it. I mean, I know it's very expensive and one thing, so my God, it's such a small, this is a 15 milliliter bottle. There's also 7.5. And uh, there's also a 30 ml version out there. Well, there's even bigger ones, like almost, I don't know, a liter or something, but they cost thousands and thousands. Only orderable online or in some Chanel boutiques in London. And I'm sure Rue Cambon has it. But anyway, um, the Pure Parfum, uh, yeah, you see, by accident, talking about this one and now that one as well. So Jean-Paul Gaultier, also Chanel. The Pure Parfums are, are definitely worth, always worth trying. And... You don't use them as quickly as, as the other fragrances, so don't don't get scared by the smaller quantities and the bigger price. You know? Let's see what other uh, commentarios we could get there. Um... Ooh! Sassy. Nasty, too. Uh, John B. on my Jeff Koons uh, Louis Vuitton massacre, on the collaboration between Jeff Koons and Louis Vuitton for the uh, the old masters, you know, the bags with Mona Lisa and Van Gogh and Rubens. Anyway, um, on the video that I made where I literally tear to shreds and pieces that collaboration, as well as artist. Jeff Koons, I got John B. saying, you just spent 17 minutes talking about something you hadn't even seen in person when this video was made, along with a large dose of bias towards the artist and brand thrown in for good measure. That said, I found it very entertaining. Keep up the good work. And snaps and poses, huh? This is passive aggressive behavior. Uh... But sassy, sassy nevertheless. So what did I answer? This was three weeks ago, so I don't even remember what I answered. I know what I would answer today, but let's see what I answered uh, three weeks ago. I said, you are funny. I think I would say that today too, but I, I said sassy today though. Uh, the entire collection was online already by the time I filmed this video. True. All images officially available and seen by me in high resolution pictures on the Louis Vuitton website. True. So you're basically telling me one could also never review a movie or a TV show because nobody was on set, live, while they were filming. Mind you, I did not review the quality of production and material choices of the collaboration pieces. I reviewed the look and the concept of this dreadful collaboration. Your comment makes absolutely no sense. As for the so-called artist... He has enough shade thrown at him from all sides already. My voice is just another addition to the growing choir. So, having said all this, I found your comment entertaining, so you too keep up the good work. Oh, dear. Well, there you have it, guys. This was 
the little fun exchange of uh, it. It was. I had the feeling like John B's and then Maya's subsequent response. It was like an exercise in. I don't know. It was like a ping pong match. I would say, with no winners or losers. It was just like kind of fine tuning our sharpening our pencils before we continue writing the story of our lives, if you will. Um, then we got Forever Fragrant Kid. How you doing, sweetie? On Chanel Gabrielle, my first impressions video. Uh, the, the perfume, not the bag. I thought it might be close to En Fleur de Chanel in scent, but it sounds more boring. En Fleur isn't screechy on my skin either. I still want to sniff this one, but I trust your nose, Jacob. I don't have high hopes for it. Pissy aggressiveness is a great descriptive. Haha. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and you guessed, uh, Forever, Fragrance Ki Forever Fragrant Kid, you were one of those that guessed that bottle, the, the, the package that I lifted really quickly and then put down again. I have it here somewhere. When I, did, when I did the game of lifting and then hiding, like, what perfume do you think it reminds me of? It was on Fleur de Chanel, and you were one of the three that guessed. And Gabrielle is still, it still screeches on me. And and if I have it on a t-shirt, I, I mean, I might usually spray it on my chest, and then, you know, there's a little bit on, left on the t-shirt, and the next day, or even a couple of days later, there's a resinous residue uh, left on the fabric that, that is still very reminiscent to me of Gautier by the power of two, which some people don't like. I personally don't mind it, but it's not Chanel at all to me. To me, at least, it's not Chanel at all, but you know. It's to, to each his own. Um, PC, how you doing, sweetie? Uh, PC writes, what are we, 70 minutes, okay, uh, on Are We Slaves to French Style? Super Jacob, thank you so much for your thought-provoking commentary. The French definitely have monopolized the fashion industry. However, they have acknowledged when they were surpassed in innovation and style. The Battle of Versailles was one uh, such historical, albeit brief moment in time that comes to mind. Love the documentary about this incredible turnaround, the use of black models, and of course the clothes. Yes, I agree with you about not being drawn permanently to beauty just for beauty's sake. There has to be something living underneath all that beauty, or I am bored. Our eyes appreciate superficial beauty, but our souls hunger for more. Hence, many of the masterpieces stir uh, some motion within our minds and hearts that is far beyond just pleasing to the eye. On another note... I heard Jeremy Scott is coming out with a teddy bear eyeshadow palette. Thank you so much, PC. Your comments are always so incredible, mind-blowing, very thought-provoking. Um, and yes, <laughs> Jeremy Scott did come out with a teddy bear palette for Sephora, maybe? Uh, and um, I don't know where. I think it's Sephora. but And I think like the launch has already happened. So I don't know if it's sold out or not. But I know that, um, that the Louis Vuitton uh, boutique... Uh, not the Louis Vuitton boutique, what am I talking about? The Moschino boutique in LA had a couple of them as well, of the palettes. So maybe they might have some, some still left. Um, Troy Smith, how are you doing, Troy, sweetie? Also on the Are We uh, Slaves to French style? Damn, this, hit, this is hitting close to home. Our son, 18, just moved out sooner than we would have preferred, but we had to free him. We refused to imprison him, and no, he is now free to inspire and maybe change the world. We believe he will. Sorry to make this so personal. The thing about ideas we produce is that France can try to control what happens to its products all at once, but the world will do with it what it will. Also, the Moschino McDonald's bag is genius. Hope it's in an art museum somewhere. Thank you so, so much, Troy, sweetie. Um, I, you know... Well, first of all, amazing. You raised a wonderful son, I am sure. And you have prepped him for everything that needed to be done in order for this human being to succeed in life, be happy, and, you know, just spread more love. That's it, you know, the day, all that matters, really. And if the love is all right and everything functions, that love will shine back right at you. So even though they're leaving the nest, I don't think that that irradiating warmth of love is, has left the nest. You know what I mean? It just spreads it's becoming wider that's how i would see it at least um 
The Moschino, the McDonald's Moschino bag is in no museum as of yet, but it is in the Fashion Bunker archives. You can be sure of that, as you've seen in the other video. So I consider it a sort of a museum. It's kind of a virtual museum for now because it's like you, you guys can access it through these videos and this weird screen. But uh, other than that, I don't think that a museum purchased it yet. So we're out of time. That was a quick and really fun channel talk, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for writing always the most incredible, inspiring, and loving comments like, ever. Um, it always moves me beyond belief, and it gives me so much strength. That despite the fact that I'm working so much and doing so much, this gives me the energy to actually, you know, also find the time to, to shoot uh, videos uh, for YouTube, which I love doing. It's my passion. But it, it ain't enough to, um, to just do that. Uh, in order, you know, because it, it just wouldn't uh, bring home the bacon, <laughs> basically, at the end of the day. Unfortunately, everything boils down to money. It's so tragic. Anyway, guys, I love you so much. Anything you have to ask or want to know or want to talk about, comments down below. And um, if you haven't already but wish to, please consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. As always, we always remind ourselves because we never need to forget and we must never forget to never give up on love. Love you guys. See you soon. Take care. Bye.